So that's kind of what's going on here today. And, you know, we weren't going to talk about uh, super esoteric stuff um, in terms of the AI and what's really happening with that. But we've been talking about that a lot lately. And I wanted to kind of give a positive spin on things, which is to understand that there is still an infinite source inside of you. And that infinite source allows you to tap into gratitude magic. And gratitude magic is you can keep creating more and more miracles with your gratitude. So you can keep spelling yourself more and more abundance, more and more positivity. And a lot of people will think, okay, I've reached so much positivity, then something's going to go, something must go wrong in order to balance the scales, quote unquote. And that's what they're, they're brainwashed in. They're like, oh, it's karma and, and all this stuff. They're brainwashed into things that are being balanced. So it's like, you know, they can, they can receive a really good high. Uh, energetically, they can receive a high in their, in their consciousness and their reality. And then all of a sudden, someone's coming down and putting a polar opposite low. And then they're sinking all the way back down to the depression state or a lower state. And this is not the way you want to live. You want to be steady and, uh, and steadily climbing, steadily climbing each day, moving up, moving up, moving up towards more and more gratitude and showing yourself, you know, sometimes when you're working at your hardest, you are actually... Uh, you're putting in a lot of effort. So then, of course, when you receive your rewards, it can feel, um, you can feel like, oh, yeah, I really, really earned that. And then you may not have as much gratitude, but still, you need to have that gratitude because the more you have gratitude for your purpose and your mission, and remember, your purpose, your spiritual purpose, your, your energetic purpose, whatever your real purpose is, this is your key to your abundance. This is your ticket. This is your, like, you've got your golden ticket, okay? Like from Willy Wonka, you got your golden ticket. It's your spiritual gifts. Your spiritual gifts are your golden ticket to your abundance in this, in this new world. This is how it, it is going to be. For those of you who already understood how you live in this new reality, this new reality doesn't have to do with um, the physical world. Yes, it is the physical world, but we're talking about energetic holograms here. So in this new reality, you're manifesting, you're detached from certain programs and overlays, but you're on the new earth. You're on the, the, the true earth. You're on the, the, the real earth. And so you're at a way higher vibration. And what does that mean? That means that your energy field is way bigger. So that means that you're going to magnetize and draw forth towards you all that you could ever need and require. And of course, if you learn about gratitude, you can always strive towards going up and up and up. And so that's what it's about. It's about going up and up and up and then uh, resting on the days where you do and celebrating yourself. OK, so sometimes we don't celebrate ourselves. We can get caught up in the work and the, and the grind and the mission and the, and the effort. And that's not the way to do it um, either, really. The best way is to take time and to reflect and to have, uh, you know, opening and closings of chapters. So we're about, we're, I'm closing a chapter right now in my life. And it's amazing that this time has come now for, for so much gratitude magic. And so as we close a chapter and we open up a new chapter, um, you know, it's just like pages turning in a book. Okay. And we are the ones writing the book. Um, and we're deciding our own fate here. Once you become a sovereign being and you're no longer really attached to the hive mind, you are becoming uh, your own creator. And this is what this has all been about. So casting and creating those, those magical spells. So casting and creating those spells, whatever it is that you really want to create and envision in your life, see and, 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 and really visualize that, that manifestation in your world. See it, walk around. A good thing to do um, is to go into an astral projection. And I was just doing this before I had, before we started classes, I was just laying down. I was just like in the astral realm, but a good thing to do in the astral realm, which I will often do sometimes before falling asleep or whenever, um, it's convenient is I will, uh, visualize my ideal timeline, my ideal circumstances, the idea, the, the ideal things that I want. So the ideal, whatever it is you want to be living in, the ideal way you dress, the ideal way you walk, the ideal way you are, the way that you see yourself. And know that this is you becoming a new version of yourself. This isn't you trying to emulate something else. No, this is you evolving step by step by step each day, getting stronger, getting smarter, getting more attuned to the force currents, to the magical currents, and learning how to become an infinite creator so you can actually um, learn to become uh, an infinite creator. Okay. 
Because this realm, as we know, this realm is a trap. This realm is a trap. It's a reincarnation trap. So it's designed for people to be stuck in a program. But if you're a real creator, you're going to see this nonsense and say like, hey, it's time for me to wake up. It's time for me to wake up and get my ass out of here. I'm not supposed to be here anymore. It's like it's like you keep going back to college uh, when you've already graduated. Right. Or you keep going back to high school when you've already gone through that class like 10 times. You've already gone through that schooling. You've already gone through those levels. You don't need to go through it anymore, especially when it's against your will. So take your power back and learn about things from a higher dimensional level and also understand you are owed a certain level of uh, receptivity. So um, this is an important thing for for all healers and people that are, uh, you know, out there in their work is that you are owed universally, energetically, by how much you believe you are owed. So how much you believe that you are actually receptive towards, how much energy, and that is what you will manifest. So while you may believe that you're owed uh, this much or that much, it may only manifest as this much, and you may say, well, why is that? Well, that's because you have to still tap into more gratitude. You have to still tap into more. And then if it's not coming in the way that it's supposed to be coming, well, then that means that you need to open more channels up. You need to get it flowing more. You need to reprogram your mind more until it really flows exactly the way that you can envision it. Until the reality is exactly the way that you can envision it in your mind, exactly the way your work is not done. Until your your, your higher self, your true self says, okay, you have mastered your ability now. You, you've mastered your energetic ability. By the way, the answer is it doesn't ever happen. You're always going to be evolving. But you will get to the point where you say, okay, I've, in, in this earthly realm, I've basically created what I wanted, wanted to create. Maybe I created this or created that. You know, I did that and this. And I basically achieved all of my earthly desires, my earthly physical realities. Now I can focus fully on just seeing how far I can push my consciousness. And by then, you know, with those states, when you're when you're so far and you're basically you're ready to give up the body and the physical illusion, you know, you're going to be out of here on on your on your own. You're going to be fading out. So that's a different uh, situation. But for those people that are not there, which is the, the vast majority, um, you know, including myself, I'm not there yet. I'm not I'm, I still have desires and goals and, and attributions. And, and I fully understand that's part of the game. And so a lot of people just they get so angry with the game. They start cursing at it. Um, maybe they curse the players um, and the players, you know, or th they maybe they curse the non-player characters or the entities and stuff. And of course, these, you know, there's a lot to say there. OK, so I'm not going to say I disagree or I agree. But of course, that's the whole point of what I just conveyed is that there is an option between <laughs> beyond the red or the blue pill. OK, so you can stop seeing things in a duality and start seeing things beyond that and just start seeing for what it is being the observer. So when you become the observer, you become neutral, at least towards the shenanigans, at least towards the distractions. You're not neutral towards your own life, okay? You're not drifting. That's what people get mistaken is, we're not neutral towards our own reality creation. No, we're very much positive towards that, but we're completely and uh, absolutely neutral towards all things that are a distraction. Now, how can you know if something is a distraction? Well, it's simply not gonna feel right. It's going to feel weird. It's going to feel, especially the more psychic you become, the more in tune you become. You know, when someone comes to you and they have a, a weird frequency or like a frequency that's not right, it's going to feel like they're trying to get your attention way too hard, way too hard. Like they're trying to get something from you. And of course, what is that? That thing is a life force energy. So that, that has to do with energy vampires. And when you feel that, like, oh, wow, this person really wants something from me, or they really try to get something from me, and it's not in a reciprocal way, well, then you have some sort of parasite. You have some sort of uh, energy vampire. And um, that's how you know when things are in alignment or when they're not in alignment. When they're in alignment, they'll feel uh, smooth. They'll feel attuned. They'll feel like it's the right choice. You may be excited. It may it's going gonna, it's gonna to get you really, really excited, okay? That's the way I can describe it is like you're going to get more energy from whatever it is you're thinking about. So if you, so you're going to be there in the absolute infinity or the void point, uh, which is outside of this matrix. You're going to be there and you're going to be sitting and you're, you're receiving energy, you're receiving codes, you're receiving information, your subconscious mind or whatever small amount of consciousness or, or um, awareness is there is going to be receiving that data. If there's any data coming in at all, usually when you're in the void point, there's nothing. 
But then sometimes you'll come into a stream of information and information will feed and then you start generating into a world and it can be a dream or something, it could be astral projection. Uh, those are the most important times when you control the thought. So when you start coming into a world and start spawning in, that's when you start to take control. Now, one thing I want you to realize is that this world and this reality works absolutely the same as a lucid dream. When you're in a lucid dream and you know it's a lucid dream, you can control the dream. Now, you may say, well, that's that's not true because, you know, lucid dream, I can fly and in this reality. I can't fly. Well, it's because of the, the gravitational mechanics. It's because of the dream mechanics. I don't even want to say gravitational because that's not really what it is. It's the dream mechanics. It's the it's the projection. So because the 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 collective mind believes here in certain laws, which makes this reality more physical and dense. Basically, you have to become more adept at navigating through the dream and manipulating the dream. And so if you see every reality and understand that these realities are dreams, we are inside of dream after dream after dream, either whether you're in uh, Sophia's dream or whether you're in the wise dream, you know, you know who I'm talking about. Whichever dream you're in, if you're in the, the other one, you're going to suffer or you're in your own dream, which is, of course, what you're supposed to be in. And then you're kind of like embedded in between the other two dreams, but more so leaning towards Sophia as you're cutting yourself out of the false archon dream. OK, so we are dream navigators. That's why they call the shamans dream walkers. OK, or skywalkers, because, you know, Anakin Skywalker, Luke Skywalker. What is a skywalker? A skywalker is someone who travels dimensions and dreams, a shaman, a mystic, a sorcerer. It's all the same thing. Dream hoppers. OK, Inception, The Matrix, the movie, um, you know, astral travel. It's all traveling to different dimensions and worlds. Wherever you find yourself, magic always works. It just works differently in different places. And it can trick you. The overlays can trick you. I can guarantee you, though, if you recognize that your mind actually generates thought power, and this thought power is similar to like the way that a watt, um, a light bulb basically generates wattage, you can focus the thought power and create ripples in your environment. And once you can see, you can create ripples within the wind, within the, the trees, within the rain, within uh, you know certain small things. You'll start to see, oh my gosh, my mind is actually like a torch. It's actually like an illuminated, uh, like it's an illuminated uh, figure and it basically has energy or power that it's emitting and it can be focused. And if I can just focus my stream on what it is I want or what I want to create without any interruptions, not doing this or doing that or getting distracted. You know, that's why we call some people NPCs or zombies because they literally cannot focus their stream because they don't have a stream. Right. So that's what a zombie is or an NPC is, is where they don't have any any sort of ability to focus any any spiritual power. Whereas you could see like the masters, they can literally they can focus their tourist field so much to the point where they can fly 50 feet, 100 feet in the air. Or where they can shoot energy out of their hands, like literally you can see the wave come out. Why? Because they can focus their mind. It's not that they have uh, anything more different than you. It's just that they know how to focus. So if you can focus and you can organize your thought through practicing, through dedication, through willpower, the way you actually develop this skill is through willpower, okay? So are you really putting in the effort? Because if you put in as much effort as you did in your magic and your power and trust in that manifestation as you did instead of going to whatever program slave uh, reality that you were already following yourself in or whatever, then you would find yourself in a much better timeline, whereas you just trust in your own inner self versus the external versus contracts versus matrix law and programs and these that kinds of things. So it is about us trusting our own innate gifts and powers and abilities. This is why I'm telling you that, you know, you that every single conscious creator must understand that they must become a conscious creator to create prosperity in their life. It's simple as that. It's as simple as that. So if you can't create that prosperity, well, let's let's speak positively here. It's all about creating prosperity. So we can create prosperity by understanding your organized thought can be generating anything you want.